so I've got this flask here, and uh, we were talking about density the other day and a little bit on uh, chemical reactions. So I don't know if you've ever tried the tap water here at uh, good old Naperville North High School. I, you know, out in the, you know, it, 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 a bit, it makes me a bit nervous because when I uh, drink it, I, I think it sometimes it has a strange taste to it. I'm not exactly sure what that is. All right, let me get it up here. Oh, look at that. It's got a little foam on it or something. So I'll just put this up here. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried this, but I was, I was trying this the other day. And I said, you know, I, I'm wondering what that strange tet is. And, well, look at that. Fire water. That's pretty amazing. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know if that's coming from the tap, but... I don't know if you have any idea why that is, because I'm kind of puzzled by it myself. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? I'm going to pause for a minute from the demo. At this point, the students will want to come up. Trust me, they're all probably already going to be up there going, that's bogus, something's going on there. What's going on here? Um, we have just covered density. Uh, this is also This demonstration is also useful in the year when you talk about miscibility, immiscible, polar, nonpolar. Um, solubility, a whole bunch of things. I don't tell them that. I play just like I've done now. A little scenario, something like this. This will drive them insane. It's probably driving some of you insane out there right now. All right, You're burning with desire to know what's going on. You really want to know what's happening. <sighs> okay, I'm going to put this out because it's me. <laughs> I would have a tray there for this very reason, that if, if, if there's a little problem, you would want to have a tray there to catch any liquid. Uh, here's a hint. Don't fill it up all the way. Now, I still haven't told you what it is. I never tell the students how this works. I challenge them to go home and ask their parents if this works. I have had kids go home and attempt to light their tap water. <laughs> They've come back the next day. I've had parents at parents' night come and say, my kid, he was uh, three weeks ago, he was trying to light the water. What's going on? What are you teaching them? How did that work? Never tell them. This annoys the snot out of them. They may figure it out. Okay, so that's, that's, that's an important thing. There are some things during the year, maybe three or four demonstrations or experiments, I don't tell them. It creates a sense of wonder in their mind. I've had kids come back after graduation and say, how did that water thing work? There's a couple more I do, and they said the same thing. How does that work? You've planted something in their mind. Okay, now I'm going to tell you how it worked, because you paid for admission. Is that right? All right. What I did was I had two flasks. You didn't see the second one. It was in the sink already. Do that. As they're coming in the room, you're going like this. So it's obvious to you the flask is empty. Use the tap water. If there were a drinking fountain, it'd be even better. <laughs> Put a few milliliters of hexane. Can't afford hexane, get some lighter fluid. Don't fill it up all the way. That's a bad thing. Because if you fill it up all the way and it overflows, that's not a good thing. <laughs> and your desk catches fire. However, if you keep a lot of papers on your desk and you want to see their homework go, if that's the desired effect, be sure to do that. Uh, I personally wouldn't want to do that because that, that's, that's not good to have that happen. Don't put a lot in, a small amount. And again, never tell them what it is. For one reason, you don't want kids going home and setting fire to hexane or they won't have hexane. But lighter fluid, for, don't tell them it's lighter fluid because they'll go home and try to impress their friends. <laughs> 